This is the Action Movie Guys podcast, bringing you action movie reviews from across the decades, plus box office numbers and insight like never before. And now, your hosts of the Action Movie Guys podcast, Alex and Nate. Welcome everyone to a brand new episode of the Action Movie Guys podcast, episode 371. We're continuing our Godzilla monster verse. Now we're up to the King Kong side of things. We're up to Kong Skull Island from 2017. I'm your host, Alex Figueroa. My co-host is Nate from Netflix Reviews. All right, Nate. So what was your initial reaction when you saw this in 2017? I actually reviewed this when it came out on my old podcast, Netflix Movie Reviews podcast. Me and my friends, we we, we reviewed it. I liked it. I am a Kong fan. So when it comes to Godzilla and Kong, I prefer King Kong movies to Godzilla movies personally. And we'll get into it in this one and really in our next review too. Why? But uh, so I was excited for it and I liked it. And I liked Godzilla 2014. You know, you guys heard our review last time. I enjoyed that movie. So I was looking forward to this one uh, when it came out and I liked it when I first saw it. I didn't see this in the theater. I know picking it up on 4K, I think it was like my first time watching it. I enjoyed it for what it was. I mean, I agree in terms of like the big monster. I'm not a big fan of it. And I know I said this in a 2014 review. Yeah. Not a big fan of monster movies like crazy, but if I had to pick between Godzilla and Khan, you know, it's a toss up. Like, it depends on the movie, right? Godzilla's more action packed because they fight and he spits out that, you know, that atomic breath, whatever it's called. Then Godzilla, I mean, King Kong has the more dramatic feel to the story. You feel for the ape, right? He's, he's you a know, character. Defender. Godzilla's yes. not really a character. No, he's a he's monster. He's a force of nature. Kong yeah. is like an actual character that you can invest in, usually when done right. So, yeah, I think that is a that is a good point. That is a good difference. Yeah. So for me, I, I lean to I'm in the balance here, like which way I want to go with our one movies. But anyway, they kicked up this brand new verse of monster called the monster verse. So they started off with the con uh, skull island. So let's start it off with these uh, rotten tomato numbers. What yes. you got there? So they're actually very close to, uh, you know, comparing them to the prior film in this monster verse, which was Godzilla. This has a 75 percent critic score, which is only one percent less than Godzilla. So they're pretty much equal, 76 and 75. Uh, and then this has a 70 percent audience score, which is actually mm. a plus four percent. So audiences liked it slightly more. Critics, 1% less, which is like two people probably. So very close as far as the scores to the first movie. Yeah, it's not bad. And in terms of financials, the budget for this movie was $185 million. This thing made a worldwide $568 million. So it doubled, made more than I guess they (laughs) expected. But at the end of everything, this means the audience were invested in this film and they enjoyed it for what it was. So just about tripled the budget. So that's pretty good. Plus 4K DVD sales and merchandise and all this crap. So I think they did a good job with this. But let's see if the movie still holds up after a few, uh, seven, seven years. years. I can't believe this movie came out seven years ago. <laughs> it's crazy. When we do some of these movies, I'm like, how the heck did this come out like 12 years ago? I, I remember seeing it at the theater. But yeah, seven years is crazy. All right, so let's start it off with the main lead, which is, yeah. it's kind, it's you, kind of you weird, know right? what we do here. We, when we're doing these movies, we do the humans and the whatever monsters the lead, because in these movies, really, the, the, the monsters are also the lead. So, yeah. human side of things. We have Tom Tom Hiddleston. He's kind of our lead character, but it's an ensemble. This is similar to Godzilla. This is all these monster movies. They're ensembles. They have like a bunch of characters on the human side. I think they're okay. I think they're okay. I gave the humans a three in total. I like Tom Hiddleston in the role. I think he looks the part, you know, I think he acts well, but the character's pretty thin. Like it's just Mm. tracker. That's his whole, like, there's no real backstory. There's no, there's not even really like a love story with him and Brie Larson, right? There's just, he's a tracker and he tracks and he does action, (laughs) you know, very traditional kind of adventure film lead character, but he's fine. I, I don't have a problem with him. I think he's good. Brie Larson, same thing. She's, photographer that's it you know what i mean like there's not a lot to them. my favorite character in the movie is john c Riley, as the guy who's like the pilot yeah. who like crash landed he has the most charisma he has the best story arc he's been on this island since world war ii he's trying to get off i love the little part in the credits where he goes home and he sees his family and all great but still a three 
Kong. I actually gave Kong a four in this movie. I didn't give him a five. I did not give him a five. I think, so this is not my favorite version of Kong. It's very different. He's literally just like protector of the island, which is cool. It leads to some good action scenes and stuff, but you don't spend a lot of time with him. It's similar to Godzilla, the, the Godzilla movie we did, where he's like off screen a lot and then he shows up, he fights something and then he like kind of goes away. He does have a badass entrance entrance scene though, when they're in the helicopters and you just see that tree come flying out of nowhere <laughs> and then he like stands yeah. up in like front of the sun, the silhouette. All that's great, but I gave him a four. So I guess combined that equals a three and a half total for the leads. Okay, so yeah, we're going to do the the human and Kong. So with the humans, I agree. I gave it a three. I I think Tom Hiddleston, it's weird, right? Because we all know him as Loki from Marvel. It's weird for me is when you see an actor that's famous for a superhero role, which is aka a villain slash, you know, a good guy. You know, it's hard. Can he get away from that silhouette and become a movie star, right? Some people have a knack for it. Some people could. Some people could brush that shit off and and spawn their own career without having their superhero persona interfere with their career choices. Tom Hiddleston does not. <laughs> when I see him on screen, I think of him as Loki. And I don't know if you're going to agree with me on this one. He has the Adrian Brody complex. And if we all know Adrian Brody, he's a Oscar award winner. I think he is. He's an Oscar award he winner. Did. He won. Yeah. For the pianist. Yeah, yeah. For the pianist. Yeah. Oscar award winner. Great actor. But he does something in this movie that I was like, oh, hell no. He does what he did in Predators. It's the action voice. <laughs> you know what I'm Talk talking about. Slow. Yes. Yeah. The, the, the raspy, like, we got to go find him at all cost. And yeah. I'm like, why are you talking? Like, and it's, but everyone does this thing. And it's so true. When you become an action star, it's not natural to some people. Some people got to put that fake voice. And Adrian Brody does this so bad in the <laughs> And Predators that yeah. you're just like, what the hell? Tom Hiddleston does not in this movie. And I'm just like, oh, that does not work for me. But I like his character, the tracker. I think it's a very cool character. Not much to him because they find him in the bar and he's like, we need you. And I'm just yeah. like, yeah, typical action movie. <laughs> like, okay. And yeah. he's like, what? Like, what's the job? And it's like, we'll tell you when we get there. And then next thing you know, everything happens. And, you know, I'm okay with it. Brie Larson. I always thought Brie Larson is cute. I always thought she had, she's a, a cute girl. Now, personality wise, that's whatever personal life. That's all whatever. In terms of the character, you're right. Photographer. That is all she does. <laughs> take photos of native people. Take yeah. photo of Khan. And she's just there to observe and take photos. Okay, great. Nothing to the story. She does nothing at all to no. the story. They just hired her because she's... It and it would have yeah, changed. Exactly. They just added her in there because she is another Oscar award winning actress. Yeah. So they said, there you go. John Goodman was pretty good for yeah. the time that he had. And yes, for those of you out there that watched the Apple TV show, Monarch, he did reprise his role of this character in the show pretty quick. But other than that, he was just there to be there. And that's pretty much it in terms of John C. Raleigh was pretty good. But yeah, I agree. I gave it a three. Khan, I gave him a four. I agree. He wasn't on screen as much, but I did enjoy the CGI of this of Khan in this movie. It's so amazing. Yeah. For seven years, you I felt the emotions of him. I, I agree with you. The silhouettes of him standing and the cameras are all panned back. The helicopters are floating over him, going towards him. I'm like, this shit is so cinematic. Mm-hmm. Like it's And it still holds up after all these years. So I agree. I gave it a four. I didn't give him a five because I think if he was more in the film, I think not had, fighting wise, but... Well, the problem for me with Kong, and this is the biggest he's ever been. He's bigger in this movie than he is in any other Kong yeah. movie. The problem for me is like he doesn't interact with the humans much as much as in his other iterations and being a fan of Kong movies like it feels the least like King Kong and more just like a big giant ape that could have been called something else I still like him though but you know for me that's kind of what holds him back from being a five is like he doesn't really have the interactions with the humans much yeah, well, I feel like he was more like, "This is my land." Like yeah, you're, you're, like you came, you interrupted my 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 shit. I yeah. gave you the 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 who's the ruler now, and you off you go. But right. I mean, it is what it is. But yeah, I agree. I gave it a four. I mean, if I total it, I guess I'm with you here on a three point five yep. on human with Khan on both. So I mean, you gave it three point five. Main villain now is Samuel okay. L. Jackson. Samuel Jackson's the villain of this movie, 100%. plus the other thing. Yeah, <laughs> what 
there's it no called things. a skull crusher? So, Whatever. yeah, I gave this a five. I okay. Listen, Samuel Jackson's awesome in this movie. He's the worst. I can't stand him in a good way. You know what I mean? Um, so this is essentially, this movie takes the form of like a Vietnam War movie yep. that also is like with monsters in it. Because it's shot like a war film. It has a soundtrack like a 70s war film. All these songs you would expect to see in like a Vietnam movie. They're like flying the helicopters. They're, it's, it's, it's a war movie. And then there's, there happens to be monsters in it. And his character is straight up like... He's a psycho. He's so mad that Kong killed all these people at the beginning with the, they're dropping those seismic charges. He gets mad, kills him, and then he wants revenge. It's like, I'm going to kill this monkey. And they're like, you know, we got to leave. We got to go this way. He's like, we ain't leaving without this guy. He's like, that guy's dead. He's like, well, I still don't care. We're, we're not leaving until we kill Kong. <laughs> yeah, he's a bastard. He gets in people's face. He doesn't care. I like him in this. This is one of my favorite, like, recent Samuel Jackson roles. If I think off the top of my head, like movies he's been in the last like 10 years like he played Nick Fury a few times he was he's a good cast as Nick Fury but does he like he doesn't do a ton in most of those movies like what else like this was awesome I thought he was really good in this uh maybe Django Unchained I don't even know if that came out within the last 10 years but if it did he was pretty good in that anyway I gave him a five the monster creatures they're okay they don't have legs which is weird they just have like two arms and then a tail the big one is very formidable Kong has to really you know really do his thing but yeah the villain element i give it a five i think that's i think they're better than overall than the good guys in this movie yeah i mean i do agree the villains i did give a five samuel jackson was really good in this movie uh and it's funny because like two-thirds of this cast is avengers characters yeah it's a lot of marvel in this movie. <laughs> it's weird it is weird you got loki you got nick fury you got captain marvel John C. Riley was in Guardians, I'm pretty sure. Yes, he, he was. was. In the first Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. 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 So it's pretty weird. I didn't die who cast this Marvel character. But anyway. Also, no, also I'll, funny thing, you got two members of Straight Out of Compton, the NWA, that you got the guy who played <laughs> Eazy E and the guy who played Dr. Dre in this movie. <laughs> <Weird>. <laughs> and then we get the guy who played Ice Cube in the next movie. So it's very oh, what is this? The Straight Out of Compton monster universe. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty funny yeah. But no, I mean, yeah, Samuel Jackson was very well in this movie You could see why You know, it's funny When you could relate to the villain That's a good job, right? Yeah. Like, I could see why he's angry at Khan Like, you have to kill Khan But at the same time It's like, dude, you did come to this dude's forest And drop, like, eight bombs on the on the, on the land yeah. Like, you can't have it either way But I kind of liked it I thought it worked well The, the monster at the end I kind of liked his design he yeah. was actually really cool. And then the one prior to that, that he fought him with the chain and the and the propeller. Oh, I thought yeah. that was a really good character, too. I mean, it's the same thing, but the other one's like 10 times bigger, I guess it was. Yeah, yeah but, it was like a big one. Yeah, it's a big version of it. But I, I thought I, I thought they did a good job on the distinguishing between that species and then the other one. And then you had other species throughout the movie, like the flying one and the, the and big the, spider with the tree legs. Oh, that creeped me that out. And I hate spiders. That was really nasty. I was like, oh, but yeah, I thought in terms of the villain, uh, Samuel Jackson did a great job. I mean, he could spin between good and bad, like in a in a flick of a switch. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was uh, really good. So yeah, five for me. Also, okay, action scenes. Five. This one, <laughs> this is an action movie. This, see, this is a straight up action movie. There's a lot of action in this. It starts at the beat, even the intro. I love the intro with the two guys and they like crash landing on the island and they're like sword fight. There's like a guy with a sword and they're fighting and then you just see Kong's hand come up. It gets you in the mood for like, oh, this movie's gonna be action packed. Then you introduce the characters like you gotta do. You meet characters, you meet all these people. By the way, crazy cast in this movie, like overall, there's like a very lot of recognizable faces. Even the smaller actors like Shea Wiggum is in this and Toby Kebbell, of course, our boy Koba from Planet of the Apes movies. You know, like you get a lot of recognizable faces. And then once they get to the island, just like so, there's so many action scenes in this movie. You have that intro, which I think is amazing. The, the just they're flying and then you just see the tree come flying at them. I'm like, oh, this is it. And then he's grabbing the helicopters. He's <laughs> swinging them around. He's smashing them. Love it. Uh, you get the big octopus fight, which is short, but it's pretty cool when he's like fighting that octopus in the water. To eat, eats it. Yeah. Yep. Make some sushi. I uh, like that. <laughs> uh, you have the night. I like the night scene with the fire. Where it's like where they're when uh, they go back to kill Kong or whatever, and it's just some really great visuals in that part. And then of course the green smoke 
scene where they're fighting with that skull crusher thing and the little pterodactyls. Like, there's a lot. The tree spider, I could go on and on. I gave it a five. Yeah, I mean, you said everything. I mean, there's nothing for me to add. This movie did a great job of balancing both story and action while leaning heavy on the action CGI. But the CGI felt so... It blended so well with this. Like The the, the person that directed this movie knew what he was shooting. Yeah. Because, yeah, you do see some practical places that they were walking around. And then when it switches to CGI, I mean, it looks natural. It, it just flowed very well. But yeah, the scenes with Khan, I thought it was really good. Even when he's walking away, Hey, it felt it felt pretty cool, like um, him dragging the, the octopus after yeah. he ate it. He was just like, doo doo doo, like I'm gonna eat this shit later. I thought that was pretty cool. The fight between the two skull crushers was really good too. You're right. The scene with the green smoke, I thought worked very well. I had fun with that. But yeah, I think at the end of everything, even at the end, right? Like after he saved them, he just turned around and walked away. Right. And he just went and then he banged his chest saying, this is my land. <laughs> like, I'm King Kong up in this bitch. So, no, I I, I, I agree with you. I think it, this movie is heavy five. It's a very heavy five. Um, Which, by even the way, putting the, you yeah. said uh, as far as the director knowing mm. what he's doing with action, just pulled him up. I know this director from, he also did like a little drama, like a teenage drama. So okay. when they hired him, I was like, this is a weird choice. However, he got coming up. Apparently, he is directing, I don't know if you're into like any sort of Japanese stuff like Gundam, like the big giant mech suit type things. <laughs> Never seen uh, he's it. attached to direct a live action movie of that. However, he's Ooh. also in pre-production on a Metal Gear Solid. So... Oh, they're making a movie of Snake? Solid Snake, baby. And this guy's involved. I like his style. So I think yeah. that could be a pretty good choice. Did they say who's playing Snake? Uh, let's see. It's in pre-production. So they got to have some Oscar Isaac, baby. Solid Snake. Oh, I can see that. I like it. I can see that. I like it. Yeah, I, I can see that. That's a good choice. Yes. Wow. That really is solid. You're solid. A live movie. That means they're going to bring back all those games. <laughs> those games oh, yeah. Good. They're going to re-release all of them and remastered. <laughs> yeah, Splinter Cell. But um, yeah, you think the first movie would be called Metal Gear Solid Splinter <laughs> I know it's just called Metal Gear Solid on the on IMDb. Oh, okay. So there's no name yet. Okay, but yeah, look. Other than that, future action movie guy review Metal Gear Solid, <laughs> Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> video game month. So yeah, so I give it a five. I, I thought this was good action. Okay, storyline. Okay, storyline. <laughs> I like it. I think it's good. I think it makes sense. Like everything that happens flows really well. I gave it a four. I usually save my fives for like the really great ones, and this is like a really good one. A really good, entertaining story that makes a lot of sense i do feel like right away that so from the first movie to this movie and then the rest of the way through they really tried to like they really tried to hammer in that whole monarch thing and making yeah. it into this big thing which i think is a little annoying personally because if you watch godzilla 2014 you got ken watanabe's character and sally hawkins like monarch's a thing but in this movie like the fact that they've been around like 30 years before that you would think they'd have more stuff in godzilla if they have all this history and going to government and doing all this stuff and i don't know i just thought it was a little some of it feels a little like shoehorned in to try to create this universe thing so that i'm not saying it's bad i'm just saying it not my favorite um other than that i think it's good except uh, the other reason too is that it's a four is like the thin the characters are really thin they're just like stock like military guy photographer tracker other military guy scientist you know like they're not they're just care like that they don't really have any attachments they're just basic so i think um i give it a four i think it's good but not great yeah i gave it a four also you're right the characters felt generic writing 101 like with these characters um nothing new or fresh in that front in terms of the overall broad scope of the film i do enjoy the action slash story i thought it worked very well i do agree with you in terms of the monarch i think what they could have done for me i wanted more from monarch if you're gonna throw that down our throat give us more conspiracies i kind of like the conspiracy route with it like with the whole like redacting in the beginning and yeah. you know like give us more of that if, they, if that's what you're gonna go with that angle give us more i wanted more of it like once they got to the states i wanted to see the conspiracy because honestly i mean i did joke around when i texted you going why the hell tom handerson didn't come out in the other movies and you're yeah. like well he is 75 but he could have <laughs> played a role even in an older age in a movie like right yeah. you know I mean, saying like he could have died or something like that, like or a flashback, but, maybe. Yeah, like a like a movie, to a flashback of a scene or something. Like yeah. he came across something and any information, and then you go to a seventy five year old version of this character. I would have been, like, oh, that's pretty cool. It ties in, you know, the characters. 
But I don't know. I, I just feel like in terms of the story, I thought it was a great story. I don't think it was like a perfect yeah. uh, story at all. So um, yeah, I gave it a four also. Okay, overall. Overall, I give this movie a four out of a five. I enjoy it. I think it's a lot of fun. It is one of my favorite of the MonsterVerse movies, which is weird because there's only five, but <laughs> it's up there. <laughs> it's up there for me. I like it. I, I like this franchise in general overall so but yeah this one's a lot of fun great cast looks great love it the 4k looks great to watch it in 4k i love the setting like i said more very different than the other movies because it doesn't take first of all it's set in the 70s and it doesn't take place in a city it's in the jungle you know it's different it's the only one that has like that vibe to it the jungle vibe and the the sun sunny it's bright most of the movies in the daytime you know it's not all at nighttime which is going to be an issue on another one we're going to do i like this movie a lot and I gave it a four. Yeah, I agree. Overall, I gave it a four, too. I thought it was a great movie. Great way to start off the, the universe, if you want to talk about like bringing in Kong. Because at the end, they show the scream, right? Yeah. It ends with the Godzilla scream. It ends, uh, yeah, um, the end credit scene. They show them... Uh, they show them all these like cave drawings of all yeah. these other creatures and it ends with the Godzilla roar. Yeah. So I was like, okay, that's a pretty unique way They're to get people up pumped up. Movie. Yeah. They did a little yeah. Marvel. <laughs> they had all these Marvel people. So they said, let's do a, let's do a little post credit scene. <laughs> Interrogation <laughs> room. So, yeah. So look, I, I thought, you know, an, I enjoyed it for what it was. I, I thought it was a good movie and I totally forgot how good this was because I haven't seen it in a, in a long time and it was pretty fun rewatching it. Um, sometimes when you watch these movies, sometimes you fall asleep. You're like, damn, this movie's kind of boring. I actually enjoyed it and we have a long way to go with these damn movies. We have a whole month of yeah. Monsterverse <laughs> to yeah. go. So I, I did enjoy this one for what it was and I did like it a lot. And you're right. The, the, the design of Khan is totally different. I mean, but one thing is at least it, it I could enjoy for what it was because I still don't understand how Godzilla could walk in the ocean with those little legs. I think I, I don't know if he to swims. To my knowledge, usually when they show him, he's like near the shore. But I don't remember him walking in the deep ocean. But maybe he does because when you posted that photo, I was keeping track <laughs> when I was watching last night. Yeah. And anytime he's walking or standing, it's usually when he's closer to the shore, and he is huge. But I don't know. I feel like he's swimming in the deep ocean, but maybe he stands. I don't know. There was another. Wasn't there a fight between Khan and him on where, where there was like the intrepid boat? Yeah, but he's that, swimming and he climbs on the boat. So, well, we're going to find out because that's. We're going to find out. We're going to watch. We watch all of that. But, up. Yeah. but from what I remember, I only saw that movie once. From what I remember, he climbs <laughs> on the boat. But if he just stands up in the middle of the water, then I will have a question as well. <laughs> 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 I always think those things are funny. But anyway, yeah. with that said, all right, Nate, what is your total points? Uh, total points, 21 and a half out of a 25. This is pretty good and good soundtrack. Uh, yeah. 70s rock. It's awesome. So yeah, 21 and a half for me. You know, it's funny. We got the same score. I got 21.5. Yeah, um, I agree with you on that one. Yeah, it's still a fun movie, man. Anything above 20, that's a, a approval. Yes. Uh, the AMG of approval. Um, and this one, yeah, this one fits the criteria and I'm enjoying it so far. So yeah, yeah what's coming up next? Nick? All right. So coming up next, we're going to the non monster verse <laughs> monster movie. Uh, and we will be reviewing uh, King Kong, Peter Jackson's King Kong from mm. 2005. So we're doing a little double Kong week this week. Uh, and then next week we will continue on with the monster verse movies with Godzilla King of the Monsters uh, directed by Michael Doherty. So we'll be reviewing that one. So keep an eye out for those two. All right, guys. Uh, that's my first time watching King Kong. Oh, the 2005. Oh, that's right. Yeah. You said yeah. I've never seen it. All right. Interesting. Yeah. All right, guys. If you guys want to follow us in our social media accounts, please follow Nate over Instagram at Netflix Reviews. Check out the podcast with him and his friends called Netflix Movie Reviews. Anything AMG podcast, you can follow us on YouTube at Action Movie Guys. We have the entire archive there of all our episodes, audio only um, there. And of course, you can take us on the go on YouTube Music, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, anywhere you listen to your podcast platform. Search for Action Movie Guys. Subscribe. Leave us a rating now you could take our live streams on the go with geeks and flicks raw we are now um we're taking our live streams if you guys are missing our live streams and checking our replays well you now you could take those with you on the go too it's cleaner we clean the audio we do a little bit condensed so if it's a long episode we shorten it uh for you guys but yes you guys now can listen to our live streams on the go we started with our first episode with 
does James Gunn, can James Gunn save uh, DC? It's available now on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. But yes, yeah, search for Geeks and Flicks Raw. Other than that, I'm your host, Alex Figueroa. My co-host is Nate from Netflix Reviews. Be awesome to each other and geek out. Geek out.